Today's episode of the vlog is a special episode because there has been a big announcement, a big release today by one of the most eagerly awaited films of the year in regards Scotland. Queen Elizabeth, your cousin Mary has returned to take up her throne in Scotland. The Queen! Hello folks, how are you doing? And welcome to today's episode of the vlog. If you're new here, please do hit the big red subscribe button down below so you can keep in touch with all my videos from now on. I talk about Scottish culture, Scottish everything, travel, adventure, my life, and all that kind of stuff. So hit the button and also hit the notification bell. Thank you. And I know I'm right in the middle of a series all about New York, but when this video came out today, I had to talk about it. The trailer is here. Mary Queen of Scots, the trailer has been released today and it is impressive. So I wanted to make today's quick episode to do a little chat about it, give you a bit of Scottish reaction initially to what we've seen and let's get your views as well. I want to hear them. This year actually is a really, really big year for films in Scotland. It has been incredible. So earlier on in the year, we had Avengers Infinity Wars filmed in Edinburgh and then like we've been waiting for these two big blockbuster productions in Scotland for a long time. One of them is Mary Queen of Scots and the other one is about Robert the Bruce. And today's release of the Mary Queen of Scots trailer brings a little bit of clarity as to when things are getting released. So this Mary Queen of Scots trailer states that 7th of December is the release date for this film, which is going to be very, very close to the Robert the Bruce film, which is going to be out in late November, we believe at the moment, not confirmed, but that is the dates we're looking at. So it's going to be a very exciting couple of months at the end of 2018, for film in Scotland. And let's not forget, folks, in November 2018, season four of Outlander will also be released. So there is so much going on November and December, showcasing Scottish talent, Scottish filming locations, and just basically Scotland on film. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait for November and December on our screens. Right, Mary Queen of Scots. And guys, the first thing I need to talk about is the two main actresses of this film. They look absolutely epic in their costume in the trailer, and I think they're gonna be amazing. I think they're gonna be up for all kinds of awards after this has been released. That has been mentioned already on social media. The production value looks incredible from the trailer. And let's talk about accents, right? This is a big one, because they did not choose a Scottish actress for Mary Queen of Scots. The actress is Irish. How do you say that name? I've always seen that name. How do you say it? I always get this wrong. Searsha. Okay, Searsha. We're getting there. Saoirse Ronan is Mary Queen of Scots, red-haired Mary Queen of Scots, and we've also got Margaret Robbie from Australia playing Queen Elizabeth I. And it should also be mentioned that both of these actresses were nominated for Oscars the last time round. One for I, Tonya, and one for Lady Bird. So it is widely assumed that this is gonna be an epic drama and it's gonna push them both into Oscar territory. Yet again, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. They're very, very well-respected actresses and it is great to have such big names kind of representing uh, some kind of history that happened in Scotland. And what we can see from the trailer is those two are gonna go head to head throughout this. Queen Elizabeth the first and Mary Queen of Scots were cousins. They end up in a power battle for the rights to all of Great Britain. I've talked about this before in regards Outlander. Outlander talks about Scottish history in the Jacobite period, the Jacobite rebellion period. That is a whole part of history that we are not really taught in Scotland. Not well. So Mary Queen of Scots is another very, very important figure in Scottish history, someone that we in Scotland have kind of admired in a lot of ways, but I bet you there will be a lot of people in Scotland who do not fully know the history. So this movie, if it doesn't tell the history accurately, what it will do in a similar way to Outlander, it will get a lot of people's attention to kind of research that history and get to know what that time period was all about because it was important in the makeup of the whole of Great Britain after that time, Scotland and England and all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna to get to see that played out. I'm absolutely certain in some of the the, the film. But the first thing I want to say, right, is accents, Scottish accents. We don't get a great deal of a um, glimpse into how the Scottish accents are going to be portrayed in Mary Queen of Scots. So I'm going to have to reserve judgment on that. There is a number of Scottish actors in this production, but the one Scottish accent that we do get a really good view of in the trailer is Saoirse. Saoirse, Saoirse, damn it, Saoirse. Why can't I say that name? We bring an heir to Scotland and to England. We hear her speaking throughout, um, kind of in conflict with her cousin mostly. And listen, a lot of people, a lot of actors and actresses, their downfall is when they come to play Scottish characters because 
they often get the accents horribly wrong. But from what I can see from this trailer, Sersha does a really, really good Scottish accent. I am impressed. I cannot criticize her whatsoever in the accent from what I've seen. There will be other Scottish people who would disagree with me, but I'm from Edinburgh. We have got a softer accent in Scotland, and I think Sersha's accent is not too dissimilar to my own here in Edinburgh. And let's not forget, Mary Queen of Scots lived for a long time in and around Edinburgh. However, that does throw up a historical question because there are a lot of people who say about Mary Queen of Scots that certainly in her early years coming to Scotland that she did not speak with a Scottish accent whatsoever. She would have, of course, spoken with a French accent. And in fact, she probably did not even speak English. She would have been speaking purely French because for most of her childhood and teenage years, she grew up in France. So really talking about her accent when she wouldn't have even been speaking with a Scottish accent whatsoever is gonna be a bit daft. But anyway, she portrays a Scottish accent in Mary Queen of Scots the film and I think she does an excellent job really, really well done, and I do not have any complaints. There will be others, of course, who disagree with me. So from what we do have from the trailer, there are a couple of things I wanna point out. And first of all, and this is something I am particularly excited about, is filming locations. I always love to see filming locations, especially when they are in Scotland and they are on the big screen. So in the opening scenes of the trailer, we get a filming location that I am so excited about because this is a place that was a secret bay for many, many years in the east coast of Scotland, in East Lothian, very close to Edinburgh. And it is a place that I've taken you guys to many, many times on this vlog, on this YouTube channel, on my Facebook page doing live drone shots. It is Seacliff Bay and Seacliff Harbour. England does not look so different from Scotland. Aye, they are sisters. Mary Queen of Scots and her kinsman, I guess, I don't know who this guy is, are standing on Seacliff Harbour, the smallest harbour in the UK. I absolutely love it there. The beach is incredible. I go there as often as I can. It was secret for a number of years. Not many people knew about it. I've had this debate before, but I wrote a few articles in newspapers and magazines about 10 years ago. And ever since then, it's been really busy. So it might just be my fault. I actually did a vlog on this channel called Ruining Scotland's Secret. I'll put the link up above and it's all about Seacliff. But like, you just need to see this location. When I saw that in the trailer and then like, I just immediately, the first second it was on screen, I was like, that's Seacliff. I can't believe they shot it down there in East Lothian. I didn't even know they were filming down there. It must've been kept heavily under wraps, but cool to see that location absolutely in the early days of the trailer. But they said something that was quite amusing. England does not look so different from Scotland. England does not look so different from Scotland. Well, in actual fact, from where they are standing and looking over the ocean, that coastline in the far distance is in actual fact, the kingdom of Fife. Fife is in Scotland. So that's just an interesting little quirk there that I noticed that I thought I'd talk about. And then we don't have to go very far on to notice another filming location right here in Scotland and very close to where I'm in Edinburgh. And another place that I have visited many times in this vlog. At around 38 seconds in the trailer, we get a very quick glimpse of a castle wall and a courtyard. That castle is Blackness Castle. That castle has also featured heavily in Outlander, and I've talked about that in previous episodes. I've been there, I've visited it, I've toured it. It is an awesome castle, so great to see that it is in Mary Queen of Scots. And I happen to know that they also filmed the Robert the Bruce film there at Blackness Castle as well. So, kind of weird that all the major filming productions that are happening in Scotland right now, Outlander, of course, Mary Queen of Scots now, and also the Robert the Bruce film that's still yet to be totally revealed, have all used Blackness Castle in their productions. That place is gonna get popular, very popular, as well as Seacliff as well. One thing I find interesting is we see a lot of people getting ready for battle. We see people with swords, we see people with guns, and we see people charging. But what we don't see is actual battle scenes, so I'm not sure if there will be any battle scenes whatsoever in this film, which is an interesting point because of that time period, it was bloody, there was a lot of fights. How will battles feature in Mary Queen of Scots? I'm not sure actually that it will, looking at the trailer, because this production, this film, Mary Queen of Scots, is gonna be far more about the relationship between Mary Queen of Scots and Elizabeth I and the two actresses. And actually, I think we see, because of the trailer and some of the things they say in it, there's gonna be a lot of like things we're gonna think about that, that those two women were way ahead of their time in terms of feminism even. Not through a treaty drafted by men lesser than ourselves. But we all know how that story ends. One of them becomes headless. So I can't wait. I've got no more to say on this other than I'm excited. It looks like a very high production, an expensive production with all little details thought about. Very, very good actresses, good Scottish accents, Scottish filming locations. 
it's going to be great. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I would love to know your thoughts on the trailer if you've watched it. I'll put the link down below to the actual trailer as well so you can check it out. I will be continuing my New York series, which has a couple of episodes yet to run over the next couple of days. But I just had to interrupt for today's big launch of the Mary Queen of Scots film. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate all your support. I will speak to you again really soon with another vlog, another adventure. Until then, I hope you have a great night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.